Rub up your engines! Well, if you're not happy with the election results, I got a vehicle you can get away from it all in. It's an 87 International Diesel. And believe it or not, the guy only paid 1200 bucks for this truck with less than 100,000 miles on it. And scan tools to work on this? <laughs> you don't need no stinking scan tools unless you're working on somebody else's car. Got plenty enough working room. Why don't you move the hood out? A working room. Hey, you got a picnic inside there. And as you can see, it's completely a mechanical fuel injection system. So you don't have to deal with any electronic crap. It costs a lot more money to make a mechanical fuel injection system. The machine that's required is phenomenal. But it's already been built, and since the whole truck was 1200 bucks, who cares how much it cost them to build it? So let's start it up and see what it sounds like. It has less than 100,000 miles. That diesel engine is just pouring away. Now it does have a homemade device to turn it off. It just pulls on the string. Try that with one of those modern computer controlled diesels. Good luck on that. This engine doesn't even have glow plugs on it. It's a very high compression engine. When it's really cold, he's got to crank it for 30, 40 seconds to get it going. As you hear now, he drove over here, it starts right up with no glow plugs. So if you want a truck for the apocalypse, hey, one less thing to go wrong. Got a big old diesel gas tank. Sure, the gauge doesn't work anymore, but there's the old put a stick in to see how much you have left. That works quite well. And you want to talk about solid build. Check out this differential, man. That is one big rear end with really easy access. There it is. <laughs> and let's say you got to tow some supplies with you when you're taking off. It's got a decent tow pinnel on here. Now you might think, how do you get this thing for $1,200? There's a lot of old trucks lying around. This one actually was going to be scrapped. And he told the guy, no, 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 don't scrap it, I'll buy it. And he didn't have the money, so he said, can you hold it for me? Well, the guy was so nice, he waited eight years and then gave him the 1200 bucks and picked up the truck. Now, you might think it sat there for eight years, so certainly the diesel fuel would have turned to gel and crap. And the engine might have locked up. He put the key in and turned it and it started right up. These old diesel engines, they were made for the apocalypse. They really were. Now you can get something like this and run a business like he does. It's certainly gonna be able to tow anybody out of anywhere with a little chain on it. And you can carry your tools and everything. And of course, it has a big old diesel, so hey, you can run biodiesel, you can run it on waste, or you can run it on all kinds of things. If the fuel supply starts drying up and the gas stations are all closed, hey, it might be old. This baby's still got disc brakes in the front, hydraulic disc brakes. But this is no discount truck. It doesn't have drums in the back, it's got discs in the back too. Since it doesn't have air brakes, here in Tennessee, this thing is registered as a regular vehicle. It doesn't have to be registered as a commercial vehicle. So you can save an awful lot of money that way. But of course, if the apocalypse comes, no one's gonna care about registrations. And you need to transport a few friends around. You get a lot of people one of these. Mind you, you'd wanna put a grate over the holes there so they didn't fall off. So let's take it for a spin. Well, the fuel tank works for more than one thing. Makes a nice step. Listen to that solid door. It's got seat belts. Maybe not a big harness, bud. It's got lamp belts on it. They have different laws for trucks. What a sweet vehicle. They drive a standard, though. But listen to that diesel hum. It might be old, but it does have less than 100,000 miles. And these can easily go a million. Now, it's not a race truck, but it trundles along with no problem at all. It doesn't handle all that bad either. But perhaps most shockingly of all, it actually rides pretty smooth. Ooh, it's got such a big wheelbase. I thought it would bounce a lot more. It doesn't really bounce all that bad. It's pretty smooth. And for those cold winter nights, the heater still works. And check out the sun visor. Hey, hey, man, that's one big sun visor. You want to mess with gears, here's how it works. Pick your gears and take your chances. And check this out. It's even lined for sound. And just listen to that sound when you shift. 
just can't replicate that cool diesel howl. So if you're looking for a good old work truck to get away from it all, hey, you might think one of these old internationals. And if I listen closely, I can hear some cannons in the distance. All aboard if you want to take a trip away from the apocalypse. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Jay Brim says, anyone recommend a dent puller I can buy? It's a small dent from first owner on a fender. Basically pouring boring water and use a dent puller. Should that be fine? And he's got a link. Well, here's the problem. Your dent is on an uneven part of the fender. No dent pull is going to work there. It's uneven. It would have to be in a totally flat panel where there's a dent so it can pull it out and make it even. You're not going to get anything that's going to pull that out evenly. There are guys out there that do what are called paintless dent removal. Now, I tried it once. Forget it. I got a whole video on that. You can watch it. And if you watch that video, that guy spent almost three hours taking the dent out of my wife's matrix left front fender. And ironically enough, about a year later, somebody in Walmart smashed into it, and I had to use my uninsured motorist to replace the whole thing. So it was kind of all in vain. It ended up being replaced anyways. Now the fender's a little bit different color than the hood, because I can never match paints on a car that's 10 years old. Paintless dent removal is very hard to do. These guys, like I say, it took the guy three hours. All these little tools, they hit, and they bang, and they smash, and they look at mirrors and try to make it perfect. It's not easy to do. And just pouring out water and putting a dent puller no that doesn't work the only thing that works on like if somebody elbowed your car was rollerblading or something elbowed your car and the door got dinged in sometimes those will pop right out if you heat them up and put a suction cup on them but with one like yours it's right on a crease no, no you'd have to pay a guy who knew what he was doing no a lot of guys will do something like that for a hundred bucks if you can find them let the paintless dent removal guy give it a try okay Garcy says I got an 08 Ford Escape XLT as a recent engine replacement and catalytic converter Shortly after the car stops from going from high speeds, like I'm going 75, coming to a stop, the car will turn off. But all I have to do is put it in park and start it up again. You see, you're coming to a stop. You decelerate. When you decelerate, if things aren't perfect, everything will, can shut off. First thing you want to do, it's a Ford. Have the throttle assembly checked. Those are notorious for having bad throttle assemblies. Now, sometimes you can clean them. Watch my video. Make your car run better with little spray cleaners. Sometimes cleaning them fixes it. If not, have a good mechanic drive it. And you can watch the dad on the throttle. If he sees when you decelerate, it just shuts all the power down to it and it doesn't give any gas, you'd need a new throttle. And that's a very common thing on an 08 Escape. They had a lot of problems with the throttles on those things, especially if it's the V6 engines. They should have basically recalled them because the throttle assembly went so bad. But it's not bad. You can get them for 100 something bucks at any discount auto parts store because they had so many problems. There's tons of them out there brand new. We toss a Scotty, my Toyota Corolla 08, hit the curb on the left side of the car. Tire blue, rim bent a little. I changed the new tire but didn't check for damage. Now it goes to the left when it hit potholes. You said you did the tire. You probably messed up the rim. Just for giggles, put like the right rear tire on the left front where you hit it in the left front when it got hit in the right rear. If it stops, you know the rim's bent, go get another rim. If it still does exactly the same thing, when you hit a curb, you hit the curb on the bottom. And what that often does is that will often bend the lower control arm because that's on the bottom and when it gets pushed in, it bends the lower control arm. Have your lower control arm checked because odds are instead of straight, it's bent. Jack it up and look at the right and the left. And if you see the right is real straight and the left has a bend in it, you know you bent your lower control arm. And that's a very typical thing. And since you had a curve, I would place the lower control arm and the lower ball joint because the lower ball joint could easily be damaged. You don't want that breaking off. Jasperian 22 says, I got a 2010. Honda Civic, I changed everything in the front end. Struts, lower control arms, axle, tires, tires, rear shocks. Now I'm having uneven ride height. My mechanic said it could be my rack and pinion. The advisor and Honda dealer said it could be the steering column. Any ideas what I should look for? Sounds to me like you're in a line of baloney and you're saying that your Civic turns into an endless money pit as your title. Well, you live in New Jersey, not the most honest place on the planet. I think these guys are really ripping you off. I have never seen a Honda Civic turn into an endless money pit other than people selling you things that you don't need. Ride height really doesn't have anything to do with racks, steering racks, or steering column. The ride height is how the springs and the control arm sit. Try to find an honest mechanic. You might have to leave New Jersey and come here to Tennessee to have it happen, though. I know guys in New Jersey, and none of them know any honest mechanics there either. I think these guys are taking advantage of you because I've never seen a Honda Civic really turn into a money pit unless it's been in a wreck or a flood because they're well made vehicles and you keep fixing them forever. And it's only a 2010. I've seen 2000s and I've seen 96s that are still.
still running like clocks with four or 500,000 miles on them. So I think you're getting ripped off in New Jersey. Try to find someone who's somewhat honest there. Might be a fruitless search though, I don't know how it is in New Jersey. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.